Hey, welcome to Impress the Boss. I'm Catherine. I'm Laurel. And I'm Valerie. And we're here to help you stand out without working overtime. Welcome to this week as we focus on Bob Ross. If you recall, we talked about Bob Ross in episode five. And if you want to listen to that episode, check it out so you can get a little bit more background on Bob Ross. Also, if you're wondering about who the Bobs are, there are workplace characters and you can check them out on episode 17 where we dig a little bit further into who are the Bobs and what these work workplace characters represent. So as I mentioned, Bob Ross this week. Now, Bob Ross is this icon in TV (laughs) history. (laughs) We all grew up watching him paint his happy little accidents, his his calm, cool, collected demeanor, his just, you know, his rose-colored glasses about life, just such a positive energy and in our lives, really, and and very iconic in that way. And so when we think about Bob Ross as a Bob in the workplace, we think about this Bob being very likable. People like working with this Bob. He brings such a such a calm centeredness to the environment. But those road, rose-colored glasses can also get this Bob into trouble. So maybe sometimes those ro- rose-colored glasses can prevent the Bob Ross from actually seeing conflict that's brewing. Maybe that can prevent the Bob Ross from seeing a problem that needs to be solved just because they think everything's going to work out in the end. Of course it's going to work out. (laughs) So today we'll get to listen to someone who identifies with a Bob uh, Bob Ross personality and hear some tips and tricks about how to be a better Bob Ross in the workplace. And Laurel, who are we? Who are we? Who, if I can speak, are we going to hear about today? Yeah, we're so excited to have Dr. Jason Carthen with us as our Bob Ross this week. So uh, Dr. Jason, when you look at him from the outside, he is a former NFL linebacker who looks rough and tough and maybe a little <laughs> bit scary. But uh, the minute that he smiles, all of that intimidation just melts away. Uh, he and then, oh, my gosh, when you when he opens his mouth and starts speaking, that deep baritone voice just uh, draws you in and makes you want to engage and listen to everything that he has to say. He, uh, after the NFL, he became a coach and a leadership expert, has a PhD in organizational leadership, and really focuses on uh, developing community leaders. He also is a very sought after speaker and has a program that he does that teaches people how to be better speakers, a phenomenal program that he offers. And uh, in addition to all of that, he's a lovely, loving family man. He has a beautiful uh, wife, Mirity, and four daughters. <laughs> Prayers yeah. for Jason. That's right. Prayers yes. Jason. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Two of whom are in the preteen, pre- preteen and teen years and two of whom are toddlers. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, so he, we can also definitely learn from Jason based on uh, what it's like to be a busy working family man. So we're very grateful to have Dr. Jason Carthen as our guest today. So listen in and join us. We are so excited today to have our guest, Jason, and he is our Bob Ross for this episode. And I am just so ecstatic to have the opportunity to interview him this morning. And uh, we are going to start off, Jason, with just uh, a couple of questions here. And we just want to say welcome to Impress the Boss. Oh, thank you so much. You guys are amazing. I love what you're doing and let's get after it. All right. So as I mentioned before, uh, Jason, you are the Bob Ross and I can cre- I can relate as myself being a Bob Ross. And we just want to hear uh, what your greatest pitfall is as a Bob Ross. And what do you think our listeners who are Bob Rosses uh, can avoid? Wow. So great question. You know, I think one of the interesting things is that I, I never would have believed there would be a pitfall in the past, but over the years, uh, leading and encouraging people, I think one of my biggest pitfalls as a Bob Ross is just believing that everyone was going to think like I think, believing yes. that, um, I guess, accountability, mutual accountability, loving one another, even in the workplace, would be something that would be welcomed. I recognize early on that's probably not the case. So I always have to do sort of a a mindset shift when it comes to that belief system and understand that leadership is actually going to be situational and understand that everyone is different and I have to meet them where they are. So that would just be uh, my expectation, I guess you'd say. 
Yes, and, and, and I, I agree uh, with you 100%, Jason, that when it comes to leadership, it is about, all about situational leadership and knowing the situation and as a leader, being able to know how to act and how to respond. And, and mm-hmm. um, myself being a Bob Ross, I can, re- I can relate to that and not you know, forgetting that other people probably do not think the same way we do. <laughs> so, right. you know, mm-hmm. great, great mm-hmm. answer. And in regards to being a Bob Ross, what do you think, what do you think are your biggest strengths? And for those of our listeners who are a Bob Ross, what would you like for them to lean into as being a Bob Ross? Right. Okay. So excellent questions. I think, you know, it's, it's part of what I just described as a pitfall or downfall, you know, my biggest strength is related to loving on folks. And some people Mm -hmm. may go, Hey, in corporate, what do you mean loving on folks and whatever? For me, it's really being very intentional with seeing where people are and meeting them there and then nurturing and growing from that point. In some larger organizations, it can be a challenge to do that. But if you have a leader and their vision is permeating the entire organization, then those individuals that report to that leader, If they have your heart, they're going to do the same thing. They're going to be intentional about loving folks, creating a very open culture, making sure people are supported after they go after their goals and maybe don't hit them instead of being, you know, harsh towards them. They meet them where they are and they encourage them to make sure they can do that. And that's for me, that's been a strength. And even as a coach, being able to go in and sort of change that mindset. (laughs) <laughs> for some of the leaders that are a little bit more transactional and maybe even autocratic. Mm-hmm. So that's really been a strength yes. for me. Yes. And and that's what I love about you, Jason, is is those who uh, have the opportunity to meet you. That's one of the dynamics about who you are is that you do exhibit just love. And that as a coach and as a father, as a colleague, that just comes out of you. And I, I love that about just that aspect of you. And I think you nailed that question. And uh, thank, well, thank you. 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 Yes. Thank you very much. And our last question is, what do you feel as a Bob Ross would be uh, within the workplace, a tip that you can give our listeners who are Bob Rosses? Yeah, be intentional uh, with the culture, uh, be intentional with uh, understanding the climate of the culture and organization, recognizing that every culture is a living, breathing organism. And the more you can cultivate an open culture, uh, the more Bob Rosses <laughs> you'll <laughs> cultivate, uh, if that's what you want to have. And, and I think every environment is going to be different. And the leader is going to set the tempo and their direct reports and then those that report to them. I mean, it's really going to take on that sort of uh, leader's mentality. Yes. And if you're intentional with cultivating it every day, all the time, whether it's the memos that you write or the teleconferences that you have or offsite meetings, then you'll begin to see that your vision for the organization will take shape. There are going to be bumps along the way, but that's all part of it. You have to be flexible and make sure that situational leadership piece is also coming into it. Fantastic. Jason, again, thank you for just being with us uh, here as our Bob Ross. And we look forward to just connecting with you and looking forward more just to seeing what you're going to be doing within your own organization and and how you're being used in, in various different ways as a Bob Ross. So thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Wow, that was great. I just loved everything that Jason uh, brought to our attention with the personality of being a Bob Ross. And one big takeaway that I take from Jason is just the ability to be able to love, to be able to love people and to be able to see where people are at in their various types of situation. And when they're able to, when a Bob Ross is able to see a person and to love on them and to encourage them and to inspire them, I think that just helps to work the people in a workforce to be able to accomplish their goals and to be able to uh, get that, you know, that oomph behind, like I can do this. And yeah. definitely <laughs> a Bob Ross does that. I know there's some fault of a Bob Ross looking at people with rose colored glasses, but really the action uh, that I would 
that I glean from uh, what Jason has spoken from his interview is the action of of a Bob Ross being able to take that initiative to love on people and to motivate them and inspire them within their workforce to to get what they need to get done and to be that cheerleader and that coach and that motivator. Sometimes we all need someone to look at us with rose-colored glasses, right? <laughs> yeah. Please, can you put those on yes. just for this moment? <laughs> I see too many of my own faults anyway. Yeah, right, exactly. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I think it's I think the Bob Ross, the value this personality brings, and what we can learn from that is is how we can exhibit love and encouragement and inspiration for the people around us, even if we're not their manager. If it's someone, a peer or someone that's in a different department, someone that gets on our nerves, someone that, you know, we just, oh, that person's so difficult. How can we really right. exhibit a loving right. demeanor and encouragement and inspiration to them as well? Yes, and I think that's right on. I think every organization, every culture needs Bob Rosses out there for that fact. So yes, Laurel, to, to look at people with their own colored <laughs> glasses, but, but also to uh, really just serve and love people. And I think that's, if we can do that, uh, wherever we're at, uh, as a manager or as a, a wor- worker, co-worker, co-worker colleague, I, I just think it just makes uh, our work environment and culture a much happier place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Very true. So our action for this week is really to identify someone that you're working with that maybe maybe it's someone that's easy to love and that's all you have capacity for right now. That's okay. Maybe mm-hmm. it's someone that you've just had a lot of difficulty with, but there's something that you can do to, to, in, to exhibit love and inspiration for them this week. Uh, we'd love to hear your stories on social, hashtag impress the boss. And please don't forget to follow Dr. Jason Carthen. You'll find him on Facebook and LinkedIn and Instagram. He's got some great things to say. He's doing some awesome work and uh, we'd love to have you join to be a part of his journey as well. Absolutely. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to follow us on social for your daily standout tips, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and don't forget to use the hashtag impress the boss and share your journey with us. And until next time, Bob's Bob's out. out.